So you have, uh, the thing about you that, you know, and I'm sure it has got to be tiring at some point to hear, have more questions about your time with Michael Jackson, but you have to understand to a lot of people, not only is it how you got introduced to us, but there's a level of respect that people have for you because you were playing with this guy who could have had anybody and he could have chosen whoever he wanted to come up there. And so... Uh, you know, I preface asking you a couple questions about it just so that you understand what it's like to be a music fan, and especially like me, my age. When Michael Jackson died, he had not meant a whole lot to me. But when he died, I really realized what a genius guy this was, you know, what, as he moved on stage and singing, all the stuff. And there you were, right at that critical moment, as the world said goodbye to him, we were introduced to you in so, in so many ways. When you look at that footage, the footage of... Uh, uh, what's that that tune that uh, I don't really care what that no, 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 no. I don't really care about yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think when you look at that now yeah well when when he passed that was played over and over again on the news and everything you couldn't turn the TV on without that and and when you're up there on that stage um, with him you're you know you're up there and you, you just want to do your best and you're just in awe you know but you don't see it from audience audience perspective of course you know because and then when you see you just see how powerful that like, his performance was and the dances and everything and how you know amazing the show would have been and and uh you know his energy and everything was just it was a dream come true to work with him being such a fan you know growing up listening to his music and and watching his uh concert i remember being really young in in, in adelaide and just watching it on tv and thinking that's you know jennifer batten was the coolest you know female guitar player and and he was just, you know, so badass. And, you know, just the whole thing was just amazing. And, and so when I got an email through MySpace to come and audition, I thought it was a joke because I thought, well, Jennifer Batten would definitely go and, you know, do it. And, and so I thought this is kind of crazy. And my manager reached out. It was for real. And, and Mike Bin wanted me to go in and audition. So I learned the Beat It solo. And Denny Diana wanted to be starting something. And, and Michael walked in, sat on the couch, I ripped it into a beat it and they cranked up my guitar and he was just sitting there and I've never been that nervous in my life like just ever who could blame you yeah I was just like I was freaking out I was like I don't play guitar again I was like you know praying to God that I'd get it you know, You're just in a room with your rig and they walk him in and he sits down yeah he just came in uh, with Kenny Ortega and, and a bunch of other people and he sat down on the couch and and he's I want to hear beat it so he went into beat it like cranked up the uh, the, the system and uh, he wanted to hear it very loud I remember and and he loved he came over and and uh, hired us all so that was just just a, a real moment for everybody it was really emotional and and it should be how many times did you actually get to interact with him quite a few times um because we rehearsed for like three months so the first few weeks was uh us just getting tight as a band and he would come in and listen to us and be like change that sound a little bit or, you know your guitar tone there should be fatter or you know just little things and and uh so we would you know get tighter and and he would suggest different things and he wanted me to have a few moments in the show just playing to the crowd and and stepping out and and he was kind of he would change it up all the time like especially for like Dirty Diana or, or uh, Black or White like he'd be running across the stage but I had to follow him so I gotta have to you know sort of look at what I'm doing as well and then sort of you know prance around the stage too so that was that was a challenge for me definitely I, I was rehearsing a lot at home in front of my dogs and, and my sister who's over there my, my girlfriend and I watched you uh, ch chasing him around on the stage last night I was like man it's hard to keep up with that guy yeah it was definitely um, especially when he, when he hit the right notes as well the, the thing I wonder flashing to today Working with this kind of guy and then being able to apply it, you know, having it, your career go on as it is, he's left, you know, are there lessons that you picked up from that that you're able to plug into what you're doing today? I mean, that, as I ask you that, you say, yeah, man, I definitely learned that from, from that and I'm, and I'm using it today. Yeah, he was just such an entertainer, you know, he, uh, he just gave it his all and, and now we put on shows, we definitely just want to step up every time. The know? entertainment value, so you're saying in your own show you've inspired, you know what, I'm going to make sure I remember, like, I want to be a real entertainer. Yeah, like before I used to just stand still and play, you know, and and because uh, I grew up obviously watching Santana and B.B. And, and King and they didn't do a lot of running. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely working with him and, and then analysing. He used to analyse, like, the documentary that was put together was uh, footage for Michael to sort of review and kind of think, okay, this needs to be changed. Or So it was basically that footage was... Review him. Tape, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And so we 
were taping all of our shows for the Glam Nation tour and, and, we, and I'd watch and I'd be like really stilted in the beginning. I'd be standing there and just playing. Oh, that's, that's kind of boring, you know. So I just started running around and, and stepping it up and, and uh, you know, and, and, and it's more, I guess it's more fun for other people that are not into guitar playing. It's making it more interesting for people that are not into guitaring because you're just running over and interacting and, and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun and, and we just try to have a lot of fun on stage. It's like a big party and that's what music, well, live music is about. You know, I think, you know, otherwise I can go home for it on the record if we're all just standing there, like, you know, <laughs> so. Well, that's a great attitude and, and that's a great lesson to have learned. As a final note, when I think about your, the future you've got ahead of you, I mean, you're such a talented guitar player and you have so many things going for you, you know, you're very visually attractive, you sound really good, you obviously have a good team that are looking out for you. Of all the things that are on your plate, what are you most excited about in the future or that you're working on now? I'm most excited about just creating. You know, I love to just sit there with my guitar and write songs with different people and and having the opportunity to work with some incredible artists and incredible producers and songwriters. And it's just um, collaborating. I love doing that. You know, when I first started, I was a little scared because you, you sort of get in a room with somebody and you've got you to sort of put everything on the table and you got to start writing lyrics with them and you think, oh, I don't know if they're going to like that lyrics. You just, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of weird about it. I was. And, and so I became more comfortable with that. And now I love it. And I've been writing a ton of songs with people and, and you sort of find yourself the more you write. You know, you, you start, right. I started writing when I was like seven, you know, and my first song I wrote, which was like spin your jackets around or something like that. And, and now just getting to write with all these amazing artists that, you know, Desmond Child, who I wrote sure. Bad News with, you know, he's a good friend and he's just an incredible writer and and the way that he writes i learn stuff just by just by you know watching him and seeing what he does in the studio and and uh recently worked with dave stewart from the rhythmics mm -hmm. and he's awesome and and uh yeah steve Vai, he's an you know incredible guitarist but also songwriter too and and uh just getting the opportunity to do do that and collaborate and and being on the tour bus is actually really inspiring for me because you're moving all the time you know so you just uh you know, we wrote a song in San Francisco, we wrote a song like all around, you know, different spots and, and we're actually going to play that song tomorrow, we wrote, and it's like a brand new song, so. Do you like Heart at all? Heart? Yeah, I love Heart. We actually got to play Barracuda with Heart at Sound Up to Cancer. I got up there and jammed out with them and, and uh, they're just, they're great. I just say that because uh, on the New Heart record, uh, Red Velvet Car, there's a song called Wheels. I just interviewed Anna and Nancy Wilson uh, and they she just and nancy talked a long time about the energy of being on the bus of traveling of passing people's lives and stuff it was just interesting as you said yeah you meet so many different people you play to so many different people and uh, the energy of the different sort of cities and you know just just traveling makes you want to write well, that's great i wish you a lot of luck in, in your future and uh i really do appreciate it. i'm grateful for some time today thank you for taking a few minutes oh thank you great chatting